Welcome to Chapter 1, the beginning of Anatomy and Physiology, uh, Part 1, first semester. We'll be learning all about the human body, the anatomy, and the physiology of the human body. You also want to study a little bit every day, okay? A little bit every day. You want to use what we call spaced repetition. Spaced repetition is very important. Uh, that means studying a little bit every day and repeating that over and over and over and that is how you get things to go from short term into long term and you want it in long term so that when you need it again it's going to be there so spaced repetition read your textbook i know you don't like to read them i know it's not fun but reading your textbook is one of the most important things you can do uh, if you don't read your textbooks you could miss questions on the exam because there if it's in the text and i've told you to read that chapter then I can throw that on the exam, likely to throw the exam, whether I talk about it or not. Now, I do try to make sure that I talk about everything that's really important, but if you see a test question on there and you're like, gosh, I've never seen that before. Well, that tells me you didn't read your chapter. So reading is the first step. As you are reading, take notes. If something seems very important, write it down. Do this as your prep work. You are summarizing, but if you want to even write questions in your prep work, I'm fine with that. If you come across something you don't understand what it means, write that question down. OK, write that question down. Often you'll be able to answer that question as you move through reading your text. And if not, you can ask me about it later or use it in a discussion uh, form in part of your post. OK, so that is going to save you time as well. All right. Uh, so you're going to have that prep work that you're going to do. That's going to be that half page summary for reading the chapter. And then you're going to do reinforcement where you get to practice seeing some of the actual test questions. But studying every day, especially for lab, Read over these notes that I give you uh, at the very beginning of this unit. You'll have that printable note-taking guide uh, where all of the PowerPoints will be on there. Take notes as you're watching these lectures because there are things that I tell you that aren't on here. And if you don't read, you're sure not going to get, uh, but that you need to listen to and be sure and take note of. And you'll need to write that down and then read those notes every day. And that will cut down on your study time, I promise you. You will not be having to cram the night before a test. Cramming is not studying. That is not learning, I should say. That is uh, basically you're eating something and you're just throwing it back up on the test and then it's gone for good. You want to digest this material and actually absorb it and assimilate it into your body. So what do we need to be focusing on and learning as we're going through this unit? Well, let's talk about that. I don't do this for every unit, but sometimes I like to point out the objectives that we're, what we're going to be learning. We want to be able to describe the characteristics of life. What defines something as living or non-living? What are the major needs or requirements that an organism has? What are the different levels of human organization or of organization as it applies to humans? And this does go across many species, but it's not the same for all. Uh, what are the location of organs and the different major body cavities? If someone has a pain in the abdomen, you need to be able to describe very easily where that pain is. That is very important because that can be helpful with a diagnosis for, for a diagnosis of something like appendicitis. Exactly where that pain is located is very important. So we're going to look at those different uh, regions. We're going to look at the different body cavities and how to describe those different things. Uh, the membranes, you want to know what the membranes are that are associated with different body cavities and what those are called. And the major organ systems and organs that each body cavity has and what the functions of those are. And then lastly, you want to be able to properly use those terms. You want to be able to describe position like superior, meaning above, inferior, meaning below, body sections, and regions. And that is all very important for clear um, and accurate relaying of information between medical professionals. So this is very, very important things that you want to know. So why do we want to learn about the human body? Uh, well, the knowledge and uh, of the structure and the function of the human body is how we understand disease. We have to know how things work correctly in order to figure out what's going wrong and fix it. OK, so if you were to work on an engine, and the carburetor wasn't working right, you would have to understand how a carburetor worked and how the engine ran and the relationship of that carburetor to the engine in order to be able to work on that. So that's the same thing with our body. We have to understand the structure and the function, okay? 
you're going to hear me say a lot that structure determines function and that is very important in biology and so we have to break it down and go all the way down to the chemical level to be uh, able to understand how the body functions okay all right so what exactly is the difference uh, between anatomy and physiology why do we have two words okay are they different um, understanding the structure and function of the human body is really important it's essential for anyone uh, in the medical field or any career that is health science related. Very important. Uh, it helps us understand overall health and like I've already said, disease processes. Um, in this chapter, we're gonna be looking at that structure and function, the organization. So anatomy is the study of the structure, the physical structures of the human body, while physiology is how it functions. Um, physiology is basically going down how do things actually work together how does an organ system work together um, in order to uh, produce a certain effect now uh, these do go hand in hand and we can't really separate them even though they are two different aspects here so anatomy is the study um, of the structure of the human body and physiology is the study of the function they're difficult to separate because structure determines function that is very important structure determines function and you're going to see why i say that as we go through this so we're going to be looking at different levels of organization and when we talk about the human body we generally look at six different uh, levels of organization uh, but we're going to go ahead and break it on down further in this slide just to really talk about if we wanted to go down into the microscopic scale so Looking at the smallest and moving to the largest, there are many levels of organization and these are increasing in complexity. So the simplest would be a subatomic particle. Or we're gonna learn about electrons, protons, and neutrons. And those come together in order to make an atom. And an atom is the smallest unit of a substance that retains the properties of that substance. So we could say hydrogen, lithium, a lithium atom, an oxygen atom, although usually you do find that as a molecule, which is a pair of them uh, in that instance, uh, sodium atom, potassium atom. Okay, so that's a very small single atom uh, unit, single substance. Okay, those come together to form molecules. We can have a water molecule, which is a very small molecule, or glu glucose or protein, which is a very large molecule. Those come together to form what we call a macro molecule. Macro means large. So that's going to be the larger molecules and we'll look at the macro molecules that are important for nutrition to sustain life. Uh, and some examples here are gonna be a protein molecule, a DNA molecule. Those are our macro molecules. Water would not be a macro molecule because it is H2O. It's two tiny, tiny little hydrogens and one oxygen. Not very many, not very large, I should say. Um, these are gonna then come together, the macro molecules come together and form organelles. Uh, and that's going to form our basic unit of life, which is the cell. So an organelle is, is the smaller parts in the cell. Uh, we will look at identifying these parts. That's going to be things like mitochondria, Golgi uh, apparatus, the nucleus, um, ribosomes, those different things that come together and make the cell work. And then our cell, like I said, is the basic unit of life. We all start as a single cell. The egg is fertilized, and then those cells split. And as they split and duplicate, they eventually differentiate into all these different types of cells, which is really, really pretty fascinating that we all start as one cell and all those cells can make all these different things from your liver to your ear. And they do so by differentiating, by changing. Um, those cells are gonna get together and come and form those different tissues. And we have lots of different tissue types and we're gonna study those tissue types. Um, tissues are very important because tissues come together and they form organs. Organs, of course, are things like your skin, uh, your heart, your kidney, femur. The femur is an organ of the skeletal system. Um, so an organ system is going to be all of those organs that come together with a sole purpose and function. And I say sole, and sometimes there's several functions, but a, a general direction that they wanna go. So the skeletal system in, uh, their general function is support and then the, the digestive system and then all of those come together and form the organism which is what for us is the human being okay and so a good example of this to kind of help you get this organizational structure would be to think of something like thanksgiving or christmas dinner 
So the organism would be Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and then organ systems would be each individual piece of the meal. We have the turkey, okay? We have the um, green bean casserole. We have the candy jams. We have the bread. We have the sweet tea. And then there's our ingredients that come together. Those would be the organ systems. Then we would have the ingredients that come together to make those. So um, for your turkey, that would be whatever you baste and season your turkey with. Green bean casserole is going to be like green beans, cream of uh, mushroom soup, and the turkey onions and salt and pepper. So those are the individual organs that come together and make the organ system. The organ system then comes together and makes the organism, which is like the whole dinner. So looking some more at these levels of organization, uh, we're going to be starting here. Let me see if I get this pen to work. Uh, we're going to have six. So we're going to look at the chemical level. Uh, the chemical level is basically going to keep everything here together. This right here is going to be the chemical level. Okay. So number one is chemical level. Number two is going to be the cellular level. Then after that, we're going to get more complex. All those cells will come together and form different tissues. Okay. So then with three is the tissue level. The tissues will come together and form organs, so number four is the organ level. Uh, the organs will come together and form the organ system, so that would be number five, organ systems. And then number six is the entire organism. So those are the six levels of organization. We have the chemical level, the cellular level, uh, tissues, organs, organ system, and organism. That's our six so if I asked you what the levels of organization were for the human being, that's what I want, those six. Remember, all these together are the chemical le level. And that wraps it up for the little first part of uh, chapter one.